News Radio WHP 580. 7.36, it's 24 to go till 8 o'clock. It's the R.J. Harris Breakfast Show with Holly Love and Bill Mead. And we welcome to the breakfast show a return visit of a uh, Congressman Lloyd Smucker. Good morning, Congressman Smucker. How are you today? Good morning, R.J. Doing well. Thanks for having me. Um, I've been looking forward to it. In fact, I'm working with your folks to make sure that uh, we get you on here monthly because it's always enjoyable. And um, you are working uh, right now, I think, on one of the... At one of the craziest places on earth. <laughs> it's uh, it's unbelievable what uh, has been happening here this week. Uh, you know, you look at what impeachment is meant for a president who commits uh, high crimes, uh, and, and you know, there's a there's a bar a level of um, uh, actions that uh, we should be looking at before we're even talking impeachment. In this case. It's unbelievable. The Democrats have decided before we even knew anything about this that they were going to find a way to impeach this president. And that, by the way, is a slap in the face to the to the majority of the constituents in my district, the voters in my district who have voted for this president and continue to support him. But the fact is, Chairman Nadler of the Judiciary Committee, the Democrat chair, uh, predicted that the president would be impeached by the end of this year before we knew anything about this. Uh, Nancy Pelosi, on Tuesday, or earlier this week, uh, said they would start impeachment inquiries before we even saw the transcript right. of this conversation. Yeah. It is unbelievable that we have reached uh, this point using impeachment as a political tool to remove a president who was elected by the American people to serve and then when we see the transcript, they had been talking, they said Biden was mentioned eight times. They said there was a quid pro quo in this uh, transcript. It was a nothing burger. Mm. It, the, the, our president has conversations, should, needs to have conversations uh, with other foreign leaders on a regular basis. And imagine what this does now to national security. Think about that. If you are the prime minister of the president, of another country having a discussion with our president. How does this affect that conversation mm -hmm. when you know that conversation could easily be made public? Uh, it's a sad day for our country when we are, we are faced with it. And it doesn't seem to ever get any better. In other words, you know, I predicted on the air and then Glenn Beck right after me because it was obvious that no matter what we saw or heard in that transcript, uh, in the heard in the reporting of it, um, it was going to be completely opposite. The Republicans would, we, we'd be saying what we're saying right now, and the Dems would say, uh, they'd have all the yeah buts and all the reasons as to why that transcript did point to guilt with the president. So the division is just so, you know, stark. Yeah, we've, we've, we've certainly seen this before. Mueller, uh, you know, I, I supported that investigation, the beginning of the investigation, but then was very disturbed that it went on uh, so long. And it turns out the entire investigation was based on a witch hunt. Um, and so they, they keep casting about for another reason to impeach the president. One of the other things that was absolutely amazing, I don't know if, if you had a chance uh, to, to review the whistleblower complaint. It, it, it read as if it was prepared by an attorney. Yeah. So there's there are some real questions here. This was not a typical whistleblower campaign. Right, right. Who helped Who helped him do this? Yeah. What kind of What kind of coordination had taken place? Obviously, uh, some legal mind uh, had helped him prepare, or him or her prepare uh, all of this. So I think there are some real questions about what led to this complaint. But amazingly, uh, I think one of the most amazing. Um, lines in the entire complaint was on the first page uh, where the whistleblower says that you know, he had not been a direct witness to me most of the activities uh, that uh, he describes. That blew here. my mind. It blew my mind, it, really. It's unbelievable. And in fact, uh, you know, I think there's a pretty clear legal uh, argument that 
this does not even apply. This should not be a whistleblower case at all. A whistleblower is intended for someone who has seen the activity firsthand. So secondhand information, and then goes on to cite the, uh, news media accounts uh, on uh, to make his case, which is thirdhand information. Well, so it, yes, but. Part, part of the biggest issue that, that we have, I think, is that there are a number of Americans who um, are, are, not, are no dummies. They know our government, yet this impeachment thing has confused them. They think that the president's already been impeached, and I think that was part of Nancy Pelosi's game as well, because um, she does have, um, a, a, you know, Senator Toomey the other day on the air, pointed out that she's left herself a bunch of exit ramps to get out of this. But even if if you don't have an affirmative vote, or the vote doesn't come to the floor, you know, half of America already thinks he's been impeached. Yeah. Uh, uh, interestingly enough, when, when Pelosi made this announcement, uh, it really didn't change a lot in terms of what was already uh, happening at Six different committees have already been investigating the president. They are already uh, charged with um, reporting the results of those investigations to the Judiciary Committee. And then the Chairman Nadler would make the decision to, uh, whether or not to start impeachment proceedings. And so from a procedural perspective, uh, not a lot has changed. But but uh, from the political perspective and from, from Pelosi casting uh, uh, or giving her support to the impeachment process, uh, it has entirely changed Washington. I think all of the oxygen in the room, uh, certainly this week, is being taken up by uh, the impeachment process. And I think as this develops, if they continue to go down this path, that will, that will uh, continue to be the case. And that's it's it's really sad for the American people. We have some uh, real actions that we need to take in Congress. One of us is the USMCA trade pact. We need to ratify that. That will have a very meaningful impact on the farmers in my district, manufacturers in the district. There's so much mm. that we could be doing to, to put our country in the right path. And instead, we're just obsessed and focused. The Democrats are just obsessed with trying to remove this president. Well, uh, it'll be fun when uh, the Republicans win back the House and, and we have the majority again and uh, the president's elected for four more years because I contend that's what's coming and uh, it'll be interesting to see what his second four years uh, will be like with these people. We have a great economy. We have a lot of things we need to keep doing, but I agree with you. I think uh, that this will backfire on the Democrats. Uh, there was a it, it even rush to judgment. This <laughs> yeah. doesn't accurately describe what happened here. Uh, it was you know you could say in our area put the cart before the horse is exactly what they did here. I think the American people already are recognizing that and will continue to see that as this unfolds. All right, Congressman Smucker, thank you for being with us. We always enjoy it, so we'll look forward to coming up with that monthly uh, time. So that, uh, like with uh, Congressman Perry, we talk to you and, and don't miss a beat. But anytime you have anything, give us a holler. I look forward to that too, RJ. Thank you so much for having me. Always good talking with you. Thanks. Same here. Take care.